This video is going to be an introduction to triple coin mining on your GPU rigs and will be the first in a series where I'll dive deep into how to optimize a new triple coin combination in each video. Because triple coin mining is a very big deal for GPU mining as it has the potential to not only help you stack a diverse portfolio of coins but also significantly increase your profitability. Even so far as to push last generation GPUs like this 3070 here into profitability now during a massive dip in altcoin prices right in the middle of the bear market. The problem is that optimizing your rigs for triple coin mining is a whole science of its own, but thankfully I've done all of the research and testing for you guys. So we'll start the video off by looking into triple coin mining as a concept, what coins can be triple mined currently and how, as well as how to overclock your GPUs for triple mining and my workflow for finding optimized GPU clock settings for any triple coin mining combination. Then we'll move on to the optimization I worked on for this video, which is triple mining Ergo, Caspa and Zilliqa. I'll show you how to set that up as well as share my massive spreadsheet with all of my different overclocking settings and hash rate results. So all of that is what's coming up in this video after a quick word from our sponsor. Unminable is a service that lets you mine like normal on your GPU or ASIC rigs, but we paid out in over 70 different cryptos, most of which are, well, unminable. This is a great service for those of you who might want to build a diverse crypto portfolio without having to go through the hassle of giving away your personal information, paying exchange fees and triggering taxable events when buying coins. Thanks to Unminable, you also don't have to make the choice between mining the most profitable coin and mining the coin that you actually want to hold long term. For example, my Jazz Miner is the only rig in my farm that's been consistently profitable since the ETH merge. However, it mines Ethereum Classic which isn't really a coin that I'm too keen on holding personally. But with Unminable, I can keep that same level of mining profitability but be paid in different coins I actually do want to hold like maybe Dogecoin or Flux or Bitcoin. Also, make sure you add hashtag Seb to the end of your working name to get a 25% discount on their fee. You do this in your minor batch file on Windows or in setup minor config in your HiveOS flight sheet. So check out Unminable through the link in the video description and get started today. So triple coin mining is exactly what it sounds like using your GPU to mine three coins instead of one. And one of those coins is pretty much always going to be Zilliqa, just because of the very unique way Zilliqa is mined. It's only mineable for a couple of minutes a few times per day. So your mining software will just switch over to mine Zill for just a brief moment here and there throughout the day. And those rounds of Zill mining are so short that they're not really taking away anything from your regular mining, but you do get some extra coin out of it. So for example, on a single 3070, you get about 2.5 to 3 sil per day, which currently is worth about 5 cents. So it's basically like getting an extra 5 cents of daily profit for free for each GPU. After this, however, is where it gets more tricky because the remainder of the time, you're going to have your GPU dual mine two other coins. And the whole reason for doing this is that it saves on electricity because for some reason, running two coin algorithms at once is more power efficient than running them on their own. As an example, when mining Ergo on its own, the best power efficiency I could get on a 3070 was 122 mega hash at 83 watts. And mining Casper on its own, I got 496 mega hash at 59 watts. But dual mining those two coins, I was able to get 129 mega hash on Ergo and 389 mega hash on Caspa simultaneously at 113 watts. So since the Ergo hash rate there is very similar to what you get when single mining Ergo, you could say that it's like getting 389 mega hash of Caspa hash rate for just an additional 30 watts, which is way more efficient than our best results when single mining Caspa, which was again 496 mega hash at 59 watts. So when tweaked correctly, you can get a lot more hash rate out of your GPU per watt of power through dual mining. And of course, adding Zill as the third coin is basically just like adding a bit of extra money for free. But unfortunately, you can't just dual mine any two coins of your own choosing. Well, actually, you kind of can. And I have a video about that. I'll, I'll link that in the video description if you want to check that out after this video. But to get that enhanced power efficiency, which is, you know, the advantage of dual mining that we're looking for in this video, 
the two coins we're going to be dual mining are always going to be a combination of one coin that has a more memory intensive mining algorithm and then one coin that has a more core intensive algorithm. And the most common memory intensive coins to dual mine would be Ergo, Conflux, Dynix, and then any coins that use either the ET hash or ETC hash algorithm, which is a lot of coins like Ethereum Classic, Octospace, ETHW, Proof of Memes. Yeah, the, the list goes on and on. Then for core intensive coins, you've got your Caspa, Radiant, Ironfish, Alephium, and Novo, and probably a few others as well. So as you can see here, there are a lot of possible combinations and since many of them have a very different requirements in terms of overclock settings, it can get really tricky to dial them in just right. So next up, let me break down how overclocking for dual mining works. So I'm going to admit right here that this guide is geared towards NVIDIA GPUs only. However, I do have a full workflow video on how to overclock AMD cards. So if you have AMD cards, that's probably a good place to start. I'll link that video down in the video description. So moving on, there are three main aspects for tweaking NVIDIA cards for dual mining. Your core settings, your memory settings, and the dual intensity ratio. The dual intensity ratio is the easiest. It's basically just a setting for if the actual mining software should favor the core intensive coin more or the memory intensive coin more. The general approach here is that if one coin is significantly more profitable than the other coin in the dual mining pair that you have chosen, you want the dual intensity ratio to favor the more profitable coin. However, in most cases, keeping this setting at a balanced level between the two coins will yield the best results. Because the more you push it to favor a specific coin, the more overall power efficiency you are sacrificing. Next, you have your memory settings, which are your memory clock frequency and memory clock offset. So, memory clock offset is a way to boost the memory speed of your GPU. And this is a way to increase the hash rate and therefore profitability of memory intensive algorithms. However, in this current environment, using the other setting, which is the memory clock frequency, is usually the better option. Because this setting locks in the memory speed of your GPU, which saves a lot of power. And right now when mining profits are low and power costs are high, saving on power is usually better than boosting hash rate. So, in all of my triple mining testing, I've found that just locking down the memory frequency is better than using the offset. And most GPUs have a few set values that the memory speed can be locked to. The two most relevant ones are 810 MHz, which is useful for coin algorithms that barely need any memory at all, and 5001 MHz for the ones that do. Finally, we have the core clock settings, and this is where it gets a bit nuts. So NVIDIA GPUs have a sort of response curve between the core clock frequency, aka the speed of your GPU core, and the core voltage, aka how much power the GPU uses. Or in other words, the higher you push the core speed, the more power it uses. So we can change the core clock frequency up or down, and when we do, we also change the power consumption of the GPU up or down. But this setting then works together with the other core setting, the core clock offset. And what that core clock offset setting does is, remember how there was this like response curve between the clock frequency and voltage? Well, it kind of just takes that whole curve and moves it over. Or explained simply, it reduces the voltage used while trying to keep your core clock at the same setting you picked. So what you'd normally do is find the optimal core clock frequency setting that give you the best mining performance and then use the core offset setting to lower the power consumption at that frequency. The problem is that if you try to push this too far, your GPU is going to crash or be unstable. And there is also no like one size fits all here, uh, as it seems that how far you can push this setting really depends on what GPU you have, what frequency you picked, and which two coins you are dual mining. Thankfully, I've come up with a workflow. So let me share that with you next. And there's no getting around the fact that this workflow is just a lot of trial and error. Setting one combination of settings, letting it run for a few minutes to stabilize and then make sure it doesn't crash. Then note down the hash rate and power consumption numbers. Change one setting slightly and repeat the whole process again. By the way, all of these numbers going forward will be Hive OS numbers. If you're on Windows, you can do a quick Google search on how to convert them. So. Usually what I do is I start by just picking a kind of middle of the road value for the dual intensity ratio. 
core clock frequency and core clock offset. Let's say dual ratio of three, core frequency of 1425 and core offset of 200. I start mining the dual coin combination I'm testing and then step one is to figure out the memory settings, which is usually pretty quick to do. I do that by first just locking the memory speed at 810 MHz, note down the results and then 5001 MHz and again note down those results. For dual mining, 5001 MHz is pretty much always the better setting. I then also try using memory offset instead of locked memory, usually trying a pretty safe number like 1800 mem offset, but that normally only leads to maybe a slight bump in hash rate on the memory intensive algorithm, but a very large increase in power consumption, so not really worth it. Then once the memory settings are dialed in, it's time for the core settings. And here it's just a case of changing the core clock frequency setting in increments of 15. And for each of those increments, try a bunch of different core offsets to see at what combination of core clock and core offset you are getting the best mining performance. And you've kind of got to play it by ear here. Let's say I start at 1425 on the core clock and 200 on the core offset and then increase the offset to 230 and see that I don't get any improvement in performance. I might increase it one more time to 260 and if I again see no improvement, I instead pivot and start lowering it instead. So I then go to 170 and perhaps I do see an improvement then. So I keep lowering it from there going to 130 and see a further improvement let's say. I would then lower it yet again to 100 and then I see a decline in performance. I would then, you know, just to be sure, lower it even one more time and if I see yet another decline in performance there, then I know my testing for this core clock frequency is done and the best performance was with an offset of 130. And then it's just a case of moving on to the next clock frequency be that up or down by 15 megahertz and start the whole process of trying different core offsets over again. Then after finding the best core offset for every core frequency, I finally move on to dual ratio. And for each optimal core frequency and offset combo, I try a few different dual ratios, starting at the default one and just again playing it by ear by, you know, going up and down until I find the one that gives the best performance for that specific core clock and offset setting combo. And when that's done, then it's finally finished and you should have found the most optimal settings for that GPU on that dual coin mining combination. Next up, let's have a look at my results. But first, quick word from our sponsor. Introducing the OctoMiner OctoTank 12 Home Immersion Cooling System. The future of cryptocurrency mining and home heating. Quiet cool and efficient. The OctoTank 12 allows you to overclock your ASIC miners up to 70% to get more performance for your money. Compatible with up to two ASICs. Fully plug and play system. The immersion system ensures that your miners stay cool. Perfect for garage or basement heating. Up to 150 square meters of heating capacity. Clean and minimalist design. Fully weatherproof. Designed to last for years. Save money while keeping your home warm and cozy this winter. Order yours now. All right, so let's finally get into the results for triple mining Caspa, Ergo, and Zilliqa. So first step for me was figuring out which mining software is currently the best optimized for this combination. So I actually reached out on Twitter. By the way, you should follow me on Twitter at Seb Heslow. And shout out to fellow YouTuber Krutman that gave me a great rundown of the best triple mining software. Please go check his channel, by the way. I'll, I'll link that down in the video description. So his recommendation was Gminer. So I did some quick testing of my own and yeah, Gminer definitely seemed to be the best for this triple mining combination. So let me quickly show you how to set up Gminer for this triple mining combination in Windows and HiveOS. For Windows, just download the latest Gminer release for Windows from their official GitHub, and then it already comes with a template bat file for triple mining this combo. So just edit that. Here's an example of what it would look like to just mine all three coins to normal pools, 
So you can just change that to add your own wallet addresses and pool servers that you want to use. Or here's me setting both the Ergo and Casper mining up to unminable to get paid out in flux. Which dual mining like this through unminable actually gets you more flux than just mining flux directly would. But wait, make sure to add hashtag sem to the end of your worker name to get a 25% discount on unminable's fees. I then also changed the Zell server to crazy pool because why not? <laughs> Uh, then you add your overclock settings in like this. You can even set the G miner up to change overclock settings during the Zell mining round if you want to with these settings. Then you save the bat file and run as administrator and you're good to go. For HiveOS, again I'm going to show you how to set it up with Unminable because that's how I have it set up. So create a new flight sheet, pick Ergo as your coin and then add a wallet and what you're gonna do is just pick the coin you want to get paid in through unminable so for me that's flux then you just enter the ticker symbol of that coin followed by your wallet address for that coin then in the flight sheet under pool selection you just pick configure in minor then pick g minor and then as your dual coin you are obviously gonna pick caspa and for dual wallet again same procedure with add a new wallet and enter the ticker of the coin you want to be paid in followed by your wallet address for that coin for pool again pick configure in minor and finally we're gonna click on set up minor config to do the rest for wallet and worker template just hover over the small i and pick the first one but be sure to add hashtag seb at the end of it to save 25% on Unminable's fee. For pool server, you need to copy in the pool server and port number for Ergo Mining that you can find on Unminable's website. Then click on the second coin and select K heavy hash as the algorithm. Again, use this wallet and worker template and add hashtag seb at the end. And copy the pool server and port for Casper Mining from Unminable's website. Finally, we're going to add some stuff in the extra config arguments, starting with our Zill pool server address and port. You'll find that on the website of the Zill pool that you're going for. Then add your Zill wallet address like this, and if you add this little string at the end, HiveOS will automatically fetch your worker name to be displayed on the Zill pool as well. Then you add your overclock settings in like this, and again, you can have Gminer change the overclock settings during the Zill mining rounds if you want with these settings. Then you save and apply your flight sheet and you're done. And let me just bring my spreadsheet up on the screen for you here. And you can see the total insanity of hash rate testing when triple mining. And I'll make this sheet available for you guys, by the way. And my plan is to keep filling this out with more triple mining combinations as I keep making these videos. So first off, I have this data tab here that should automatically track and update mining profitability for all of the available triple mining coins. However, Please know that profitability changes every day, every hour, every minute. So while this sheet can be able to give you a rough idea, it should not be viewed as an like exact guide to profitability or anything like that. As a matter of fact, the profitability numbers are there more just to give you a rough idea of what settings are most profitable, not exactly like how profitable they are. I, I hope that makes sense. And this tab also has a feel for filling out your power costs. For me, that's about 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you open the sheet and make a copy of it, you'll be able to edit it and then you can fill in your own number there. Oh, I should also add that all of the numbers in the sheet are for the RTX 3070. And in just a second, when you see the spreadsheet, you'll understand why I don't have time to do this kind of testing on multiple GPUs. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I picked the 3070 as I think it's one of the best GPUs for mining in terms of both value for money and efficiency. Plus it's the GPU that seems to be the most popular among you guys who watch my videos. So on this tab here, I'll collect exactly all of the data for all of the triple mining coin combinations that I test. So in the future, you'll be able to go through all of this to see what coin combo is the most profitable and at what settings. And then I also have a specific tab for each combo down here. So let's move to the Ergo, Caspa and Zilliqa tab. And as you can see here, yeah, I'll stop testing. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not going to bore you by going through all of the numbers here. Instead, let's just sort by the profit column and we can see our most profitable settings here, which currently bring in about four cents of profit after power for me per 3070. So yeah, nothing massive profit wise. But if you're using mining as a way to stack crypto at a discount, you are still getting a four cent daily discount compared to buying coins for each 3070 that you have mining, which, you know, isn't nothing. But also stay tuned for future videos as other triple mining combinations might be more profitable than this one.